Have you ever wanted to run certain commands on your Linux system and then it tells you permission denied? In this video, we will look at the sudo command which will allow an ordinary user to perform tasks that are usually reserved for someone with administrative privileges. We will look at how to use sudo and then look at how to set up a user with sudo privileges which are important to folks in defer world and also for sysadmins. So why would an ordinary user need to perform special tasks? For example, starting and stopping system services like a web server or SSH server are things that are limited to someone with root access. The root account is the most privileged account and can do most things on a Linux system. But when I try to perform a task reserved for an account with higher privileges, I will be prompt for the root password. So I'm going to go ahead and do systemctl stop the ssh.service. And if you look at the pop-up here, you have to choose an account and then you have to enter the password for that account. And only accounts that have root privileges are shown on this list. And so the account that I'm using, this demo account, is not even on the list. So I can't even type in a password to authenticate. So one solution is for an ordinary user to change the login to the root account by doing a substitute user command or SU. This requires that they actually know the password as they will be prompted for it. Once authenticated as the root user, then the person will have the privileges to do what they want. So here I'm going to do sudo, which is the super user do. And then I'm going to do substitute user. And then I'm going to specify the dash, which will basically inherit all of the properties of the account I'm going to log into. And then lastly, if you don't put in an account name, it will default to changing your login to root. So now I'm prompted for the password. Now that I have become root, I can type that system control command again to stop the SSH service. So I'm going to type in system control stop ssh.service. And then you can see that the service is now stopped. And I can go ahead and start that SSH service by doing system control start ssh.service. But this is something that most security folks and system administrators advise against. Right. First of all, you're giving out the root password, so that's one problem. And even if you know what you're doing, it's dangerous to be trancing around the system as root. But what if I want a certain account to have privileges for certain things? This is where the sudo command comes in. I pronounce it sudo. Some people pronounce it sudo. In either case, it's short for super user do which will allow a non-privileged user to temporarily gain root privileges for that command only. You can also think of it as substitute user do if you specify a username when you run the sudo command. So you can do sudo dash u and then give it the username. If you leave out the username, it will default to root. So the way to use a sudo command is to prepend it to whatever I was trying to do that needed root privileges. So let's take a look at a file's permission. So I'm going to do ls-l of slash etsy slash ipsec.secrets. So we can see for this file, the only people that can read and write to the file is the root user. There is no privileges for the group or others. So if I try to look at it, I will fail. I'm going to do cat of etsy slash ipsec.secrets. And sure enough, I don't have the privileges. So now let's try doing it again by prepending the command with sudo. I'm going to do sudo cat of etsy slash ipsec.secrets. So now as you can see, we can see the contents of the file because we invoked the cat command as the root user who does have the privileges to see the file. So great, sudo is simple. It just works and I can use it to do whatever I want on the system as root. Uh, actually not really. The reason why it's so easy is because I had already set up this account to be allowed to run sudo. This is the step that you haven't seen yet, so let's create a new user to show you those steps. Let's create a new account with the name Bubba. For this part, I will switch user to root so it's easier to show you how this is done. So I'm going to do sudo, su, and dash. So now I'm root. So as root, I'm going to do add user of Bubba. 
I'll get prompted for a password. I'm going to go ahead and type in the password. It's going to prompt me to retype the password. So I'm going to go ahead and type it again. And for the full name, I'm going to call it Bubba Gump. And for the rest of these, I'm just going to skip for the sake of this demo. And at the end, you are asked to confirm, is this information correct? I'm going to go ahead and answer why. All right. So now let's verify that the account Bubba was indeed added. I'm going to do sudo dash of Bubba, right? So this is going to do substitute user. The dash again is going to inherit all the properties of the user Bubba. And then the account that we want to substitute user to is Bubba. All right, so now that we're Bubba, let's type the groups command, G-R-O-U-P-S, to see what groups Bubba belongs to. All right, so now we see that Bubba is only in the Bubba group and the user group. So let's go ahead and try to cat that file that only root had access to, right, uh, that we did before. So if we do go ahead and do sudo cat of Etsy ipsec.secrets, it's going to prompt us for the password. So I'm going to type in the password for Bubba. And now we get returned this message that says Bubba is not in the sudoers file. This incident has been reported to the administrator. So what does that mean? So what that means is that in order for the account Bubba to do anything with sudo, Bubba has to be listed in this file called the sudoers file. All right. So now we know that Bubba is not in the file, so it won't let us perform anything as root. So let's go ahead and fix this by adding Bubba to this sudoers file. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit back to the root account. All right, so now I'm gonna modify the Bubba account to add myself to the sudo group. All right, note that if you are running Fedora, RHEL, CentOS, BSD, or any other similar distros, the group is named wheel and not sudo. So that's only slight difference. All right, let's continue because I have a Ubuntu or Debian build. So I'm going to do user mod dash A capital G. All right, so that's going to append to the group named. And then I'm going to type in sudo, which is the name of the group. And then lastly, who I want to add. And I want to add Bubba. To verify what I just did, I can do sudo dash Bubba again. So I'm back as Bubba. And now I'm going to type groups. And now it's going to show that I am in the Bubba group, the sudo group, and the users group. All right, so now that we see that Bubba is in the sudo group, we can try to look at that file again. So I can do sudo cat slash etsy slash ipsec.secrets. It's going to prompt us for the password again for Bubba. And once I type in the password, it is going to show us that file. Success. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get the uh, sudo privileges for any user is that you have to add them to that sudo group. All right, so now that I am in the sudo group, let's see who else is in that sudo group. So one of the ways you can tell is doing a grep caret sudo slash etsy slash group. What the caret is going to do is only match the word sudo if it is at the beginning of a line. All right, so if we see sudo anywhere else but in the very beginning of a line, it will not match. So the answer comes back, and it's the sudo group listing, and it has the user named user in there, and it also has the username Bubba in there. All right, so those are the two people who are in that sudo group. And if you want to see if any particular user is part of that sudo group, you can do sudo-l and then name that user. So for this instance, let's just use Blue Monkey Forensics. And whoops, what I did was I forgot the dash capital U option to name the user. So really the command should read sudo-l to list and then dash capital U. And then you can specify the user, Blue Monkey Forensics. So now the response comes back and tells us that user named Blue Monkey Forensics is not allowed to run sudo on this machine named Parrot. And we kind of already know that because we didn't see Blue Monkey Forensics as part of the sudo group earlier. To sum it all up, the way that sudo works is that when a user uses sudo before any command, 
the OS will first ask that user for their password. And if the password verifies, then it goes to the sudoers file and then checks to see if the user is allowed to issue this command. If he is allowed, then success, the command is executed. Otherwise, the command will fail and you will see either a notice that the user is not in the sudoers file uh, and then the incident will be reported or it will say, sorry, the user is not allowed to execute as a certain user on that host. I know that you will enjoy another Linux forensics video like this one here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.